intoxicated and inebriated by the old me until I was emancipated. The shield of wisdom helps the perk of the schism within the body. Cause human nature told me to be naughty and haughty. The words of hook around has got a big scene. But I got spiritual medication so my soul can be at ease. We got the shield, we got the helmet, and the sword. We got to kill that old man so we can kick it with the Lord. What's the true chapter for me? Exciting edition of Shilawism. I'm your host, Priest Style Wong. Shilawism is a program that's geared to teach brothers and sisters all over the world the truth according to the word of the Most High God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'd like to start off with uh, Colossians 3 17, which says, And whatsoever I do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father to Him. So, I want to start off with that because everything I do and say and everything that you do and say as you walk and talk in this world should all be in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you put everything in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ goes to the Father on your behalf. And as you exalt him and, and confess him before men, he confesses you before the Most High God. And the angels in heaven confess you before the Most High God 24-7. So I want to establish that first and foremost, you know, and give all praise to the Most High God. And our Lord and Savior, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, who's coming back to redeem us and set up a righteous kingdom, kingdom upon this earth. I hope soon. And give him all the praise and glory. Yes. So I'm going to do today a show that we all need to look at ourselves and really contemplate on doing this periodically to ourselves. And it's called self-examination. And... It's something that, as I said, we all need to do and take the time to go into to be able to uh, look at ourselves and tear ourselves apart. Because a lot of times, you know, we as a people, we tend to look at someone else's fault, but we won't find the faults in ourselves, you know. And um, I myself, as a priest, I'm, I'm working to be perfect in Christ, you know, as you should be, you know. But... I still have my thoughts. That's why I go through this myself consistently, you know, periodically to make sure that I be tearing myself apart so that, you know, I can't take the beam out and look at someone else, something that's wrong with someone else. It's quite saying, you know, how are you going to take the uh, the beam out of someone else's eye or whatever and, and paraphrase it, you know, look at what somebody else is doing and then you're not looking at yourself, you know. So first we got to look at ourselves. And I'm going to start out today and... Uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, and I hope you have a VCR tape or uh, get out a pencil and a pad, you know, and write down the scriptures so you can go over them yourself for review and feel the, uh, a further date, you know. 
and I will, I will be reading from the King James 611 Bible, and I am a priest of the church in the name of Yahweh Shai, or the church, Bahashem HaMashiach Yahweh Shai, which is the church in the name of Jesus Christ. So, I'm going to start out with 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, and it says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So, I went to the scripture. I want to. I want to deal with these words, you know, because every God, of, excuse me, every word of God is pure, right? So I looked at examine. Now I'm going to the dictionary. Bear with me. And I looked up each key words in that one particular scripture, and that was uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Now look up examine, and it says this, because this is about examining ourselves. I look up examine, and it says to look at critically or methodically, investigate or inspect, to test by questioning. So that's the first thing we have to do to ourselves. Not to someone else, but to ourselves. That's what this is about, self-examination. You know, I like what Christ said. He said, love thy neighbor as thyself. But that was something that was written in the law that God gave to Moses to give to the children of Israel. Right? He said, love thy neighbor as thyself. So let's look at that last word, self. And when you look at self, then you can, look, you can understand how you feel about yourself is the same way you will feel about someone else. So if you don't love yourself, how can you love somebody else? That's why you got to learn to love yourself. But first you got to look at all the things that's wrong with you or with us and tear ourselves apart, examine ourselves and say, once again, the, the word examine. And I want to say this too. A lot of times you have the Bible and you have, you're trying to understand the Bible, but where are your tools to understand the Bible? You know, you can say examine means whatever it is that you think of, but it's a ex clear explanation of what examine means. That's why I have a dictionary, a Bible dictionary, you know, and other books that go along with the Bible that you can do a reference, guys, to help you to understand the Word of God. So it says examine. Since it is in the English language, this is the uh, Webster's on the Dictionary. It says to look at critically or methodically investigate Inspect. So these are the things we have to do to ourselves. We got to ins investigate ourselves, inspect ourselves. I mean, you're checking yourself out thoroughly, all your faults that you have, to test by questioning. Right? So now, it says in uh, Second to, uh, Corinthians 13, and the fifth chapter, examine yourselves. So you got to test yourself. You got to inspect yourself. You have to uh, investigate yourself. So once you investigate yourself, you inspect yourself, and you test yourself by questioning the same, the same investigation, the same inspection, the same uh, question that you ask yourself and testing yourself, you can ask someone else once you went through yourself first. That's why we're dealing with self-examination. So once you went through yourself and you tore yourself apart, and tearing yourself apart, then that should make you more humble, a better person, to be able to go out there and deal with someone else. And when you deal with someone else, when you tear yourself apart, you can give examples of how you went through this examination yourself and how you find you found the same faults that they have in yourself, rather than not admitting that you have faults and you deal with someone else and try to tell them their faults and you don't have any faults. That's like that's why people think you are conceited. Or you just over overwhelmed with yourself. But if you, uh, you you can say that, hey, I tore myself apart here, okay, I understand what you're saying there because I feel the same way. I went through the same thing when I looked at myself. You know? Then you then you can start to win your neighbor over to yourself, you know, and love your neighbor as thyself. And they can respect you more. Okay, so that's examine. Say so examine yourself. Whether you be in the faith. Now what's faith? Once again. Hebrews 11 and 1. And it says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. 
So that's what faith is. And when you enter faith, and your faith, you have to have faith in your shine that he's going to go, who is Jesus Christ, his name in the Hebrew, that he's going to go to the Most High on your behalf. What did I start off with? Everything I do and say is all in the name of Jesus Christ, as you know him. I know him as Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ in the Hebrew. So it says examine yourself whether you be in the faith, whether or not you really believe and have faith and hope in our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, you know. So it says prove yourselves, excuse me, prove your own selves, right? So now let's look up prove, what prove? What's the definition of prove? And it says this. Prove. To test by experiment a standard. To establish as true. To be found by experience or trial. So Jesus is going right along with examination. You got to test by experiment. Okay, if this happened to me, what would I do? Or what did I do? If there were things that came into your mind as far as you coveting some, what someone else had, did you do it or did you not do it? You know, when it happens, what are you going to do? Did you do that? Did you, did you uh, desire what your neighbor have? Envious because what they have, want to have the same things? Just an example, you know. It says, to test by experiment, a standard. You know, our standard is what the Word of God says. Let's try and follow the Word of God the best of our ability. Can you do that? Are you doing that? To establish as true. It says, prove your own self, establish yourself as true. Are you with Christ? Are you down with the Holy Spirit? The Spirit of God, the Spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To be found by experience or trial. Your experience is anything that has happened to you in the past. So you got to look at your experiences, what you went through, and how you reacted to the things that came at you. If it was lust that came at you, did you push it away or did you fall into it? You know, we're in a wicked world today, people. And a lot of things will come at us in this world to keep us wicked and to stop us from reaching the kingdom of heaven. And there's a diabolical plan against us with all the things that's coming at you from the television to the magazines to the, uh, the media to the schools. I mean, I always say, you know, look at our children. You know, they took, they took the Most High God and they took our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, out of the school. So who did they leave there? Satan and the devil and his ways and the things that, how he could be exalted. Anytime you look at how prominent the church of Satan is today, outright, not in disguise, but outright in your face, wake up, you know, because that's, that's what's happening in this world today. It's right in your face. And some of you turning your back on it. So you're turning your back on our children. And to turn our back on our children, God is not going to be satisfied with that. He's required of you. Because that's where you're sending your children into. That's why you got to give them some foundation. That's why it says prove yourself. They have experience. You're responsible for your children. A lot of you don't want to take that responsibility. You done copped out. Oh, that sent them to school as a... Uh, babysitter but you have children in your house you are responsible for those children you know that's just an experience that I'm dealing with and that's the experience that you deal with and the experience is something that you have already went through in the past you know so once you look at your experience how are you going to improve your future your present and your future from your experience of the past so now to prove your own selves. So you test your own self in many different ways. See whether you be in the faith. If you really believe. And have hope. In what you believe in. It says. Uh, know ye not your own selves. 
A lot of you out there don't know yourself because you don't go through tearing yourself apart. You're too busy trying to downplay the spirit of someone else. But look at yourself. First and foremost, if you're, not, if you're not able to look at yourself, then you're not able to deal with loving someone else. Because a lot of you don't love your neighbor because you don't love yourself. You got so many problems with yourself, you can't love no one. You got to come off of that. It's time. It's time to wake up. It's time to come out of this gross darkness that's in this world. And come back to the reality of the Most High God and Jesus Christ's word. Because he's looking down from heaven on this simple kingdom and simple kingdoms, no matter where you are. And he's going to be required of you if you don't hear the word of his son, Yahweh Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. Because he said it in Deuteronomy 18 and 18 and 19. So it's time to wake up and come out of this gross darkness. Because the world is in gross darkness, which means gross ignorance. According to the word of God. Now it says. Know ye not yourselves. Your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you. How is he in you? He's only in you through the Holy Spirit. He said I am in my father. My, I, and my father is in me. So when you have Jesus Christ spirit in you. You have the father spirit in, to, in, in, him, in, in yourself too. You have the spirit of Jesus Christ and the spirit of the most high God in you, along with your personal spirit. So I said, know ye not? It says, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Now let's look up that word, reprobate. Reprobate. Bear with me. Because if he's not in you, then you're going to be like this, a reprobate. Mm. And it says this, reprobate, a, a reprobate person, unprincipled or depraved, unprincipled or depraved. Let's find out what depraved means. That's a good word. So it's always good to have a dictionary. So you won't have to take my word for it. You take exactly what the word means. <coughs> Excuse me. Depraved. To make morally bad. Corrupt. So it says... Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So, if Jesus Christ is not in you, no matter who you are, you will be morally bad or corrupt. Did you get that? Once again. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobates. Which is what? If he's not in you, if Jesus Christ is not in you, then you become morally bad and corrupt. So I like to, I just, I spend a lot of time on that because I want you to understand this self-examination of ourselves. You know, that we have to go through and make sure that we're tuned into the word of God along with our everyday life. And it's not hard, you know. A lot of people, they try, they try and deal with uh, religion, which is a, comes from a Latin word, religio, which means to hold back, keep down, or restrain. And that's what it does. But the word, but when you into Christ, you're free. You're free. You know, it's too much rigid. You know, that's why the Bible says, be over much, be, be not over much wicked, be not over much righteous. Why must I die before that time? You know, and that's what a lot of religions have done. They walk like this, you gotta walk like we robots. Don't see in one way, they tunnel brain. You only can see one way. You can't, you got a wall that's going straight here and a wall right there. 
on each side. You just look forward, you put a wall right in front of you, right from the side of your face on out. And nothing can penetrate, nothing can penetrate because you're not open-minded. How are you going to be open-minded? How are you going to, a lot of you condemn your, your brothers and sisters. You condemn your brothers and sisters. Why? Because they're not where you're at. Christ was friends to publicans and sinners. Now, how are you going to condemn someone and Christ was friends with publicans and sinners, the ones that didn't follow righteousness? Why would he say, make you friends of righteousness on, of, excuse me, make you friends of mammoth of unrighteousness so that when ye fail, he may lift you into everlasting habitation? You know why he said that? That's saying the unrighteous make you friends of the unrighteous that have the money so that if you need money, you can go to them to, to take care of yourself if you need it. If he was friends to publicans and sinners, he said he didn't come to save the righteous. He came to save the unrighteous. The righteous already is going to be saved. I mean, come on, let's use some common sense here. You know, don't look down upon people. You know, esteem others more than thyself. That's what Paul said through our Lord and through the Spirit of the, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that's the first thing we got to do is stop lear learning how to condemn your brother and sister and learn how to love each other. You know? So I'm going to start. I'm going to go to Matthew, the seventh chapter. I'm going to start at uh, verse 1. It's a very good chapter. Um, and it says, Judge not that ye be not judged. So if you judge him, when you're judging somebody, remember, you're going to be judged too. Always keep that in mind. It says, For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye make me, it shall be measured to you again. So if you're going to measure somebody, like I would, I would judge someone according to the word of God. But also, I remember myself, and I have in my mind the fact that I'm going to be judged the same way, according to the word of God. And as long as I keep that in mind, I have to keep that in perspective of how I'm going to look at someone else in judging them. The same scripture that I pull on them, I'm learning, and it's going to cut me too if it applies to my life. If you have the spirit of the Most High God and the spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the true spirit, the only spirit on this earth that you should have within you, or else you'd be morally bad or corrupt, as I just showed you, it's the only way. As Christ said, he's the only way. If you have Christ, you have the most high God. Honor the Father as you honor the Son. As you honor the Father, you honor the Son. They both come together. I and my Father are one. They both agree. The same way we have to be in the same mindset, according to the Word of God, according to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the most high God and the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was shy. How much? Yuck. Jesus the Christ. So as long as we lock into the same spirit, and that spirit is according to the word of God, then we're going to be we're gonna be moving in the same path, getting ready for the kingdom that he's getting ready to set up on this earth. Praise the Lord. It says, verse 3 says, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's 